What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with our probability unit. Today, we're going to be making a probability model for compound events using visual models. So let's take a chance and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to create a probability model for a compound event by using organized list, tables, and tree diagrams. But first, let's start with our math vocabulary. So we are going to list a few different math vocabularies here and give you the definition and then show them to you as we do our examples. A sample space is something we've talked about in several of our lessons. It's just all the possible outcomes of an experiment. Okay, and typically you write those in brackets. A probability model, you guys have been doing this for a few lessons now, even though we hadn't named it yet, is when you have the sample space in the probability for each of the outcomes. And so we're going to look at an example of that next slide. A uniform probability model is a model where all the outcomes have equal probability. Okay, like when we rolled the dice and you could have, and the probability for landing on each of the sides was one sixth. That's what we would call a uniform probability model. And then a compound event is when two or more events are happening at the same time. Everything we've done up to this point in our lessons have all been simple events. Only one thing was happening, right? We were rolling one dice, or we were flipping one coin, or we, we were picking one marble out of the bag. A compound event is when two or more events are happening at the same time, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But first, let's start with our probability model. So this is something you've been doing and you didn't even know, right? So if we wanted a probability model for the process of flipping a coin, the first thing we'd start with is our sample space, and that's supposed to be a bracket, but mine always look like butts when I draw them, so I don't draw them anymore. And our sample space is just all the possible outcomes. It could either be heads or tails, right? And you put those in brackets and then you call the sample space, voila. Now, here we have our probability model. So our sample space we can rewrite here. So it can either have an outcome of being a heads or a tail. And the probability of each of those, as you know already, is one half. And that's what we call a probability model. We've been doing this already, we just hadn't named it yet. Now, we would label this as a simple event because we are flipping the coin once, right? We are finding the probability for if you flip the coin one time, what would happen? Let's take a look at the difference between a simple event and a compound event. So here in our I do problem, it says two fair coins are being flipped. So now instead of doing one, we're doing two, okay? What is the probability that both of the coins land on heads, okay? So now instead of doing a simple event, just doing one coin, we're going to be doing two coins. Now, just, you don't need, really need to know this, but this is called an independent, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. That's how I learned how to spell independent. I'll uh, listen to that song if you don't know, okay? I'm not saying it's a great song, I'm just saying to help me spell the word independent. So this is called an independent compound event because we're gonna flip two coins and they're independent of each other, right? If you flip one coin and it's heads, that doesn't mean the second coin is gonna be heads. They're not affecting each other, all right? And there's gonna be two, uh, th sorry, three different ways we can do this. So we want the probability, we want to make a probability model, which means we need to have our sample space, right? And we need to have the probabilities, okay? And that's going to tell us different outcomes and their probabilities are of this experiment. So I'm actually gonna start with a tree map because I really love the tree map, it's my favorite one. So here, we're, we can, we're gonna flip a coin, okay? And it's either going to be heads or tails, right? These are the two different outcomes for that. Then, once you flip it, if you flip heads, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna flip the second coin, right? And the second coin can also either be heads or tails. If you flip a tails for the first one and you flip it again, well guess what? Your two other options are heads or tails. So you can see right here, that's why I like the tree map because you can very clearly see the events. Here is event one, that's one flip, right? And then from there, here we have event two. Okay, that's the second coin flip. You can see both events laid out vertically. Sometimes they do it horizontally, I like to do it vertically. So now we need to write down the different outcomes that it could possibly be. If we flip heads and then flip heads again, we could have flipped two heads, right? If we flip heads and then we flip tails, we would have a heads and a tail. If you flip tails and then heads, you would have tails and heads next to each other. 
And if you flip tails and then a second tails, you could flip it like that. So for this event, for this compound event, there are four different outcomes. So here's our sample space. Now we need to know the probability. Well, there are four different outcomes and you can only have heads heads once. So the probability of getting two heads is one fourth. The probability of getting heads and tails is one fourth. The probability of getting a tails and a head is also one fourth. And the probability of getting two tails, oops, is, there we go, one fourth. So we did a tree map and then this down here would be our probability model. Now you don't have to draw a box around, I'm just doing it for fun, but here's your probability model. You have a one fourth chance of flipping two heads, a one fourth chance of doing heads and tails, a one fourth chance of doing tails and heads, and then a one fourth chance of doing tails and tails. Now an organized list and a table do the exact same thing. So let me erase my events. And for a table, you're gonna get the same answer because these are just three different ways to help you make a probability model for a compound event. But you're gonna make a table. There we go. Whoop. And this is kind of like doing the uh, open array method for multiplication. And you have two options for your first event. And you have two options for your second event. So you can kind of see your events right here. That's event one, flipping the coin. That's event two, flipping the coin. Just like your open array, you just kind of add the letters together. So here we have heads and heads, then heads and tails, then tails and then heads, and then tails and tails. And again, you can see very clearly that I have a one fourth chance of each of them. And I just made my sample space. I have all the different possible outcomes right here. So then you just have to rewrite them with the probability, okay? Our organized list is kind of the least organized actually out of all of them. So if you flipped heads first, you could flip heads heads, or you could flip heads tails, or if you, you could do tails heads, or you could do tails tails. So the organized list is my least favorite of them because you kind of have to, to me, you have to do more thinking as you write them down. Whereas if you set up your table or your tree map and follow the procedures, it makes it a little bit easier. And then again, you just want to have your probability. It's one fourth for each of these. So that, these are our three different types of visual models you can do for a compound event. I'm going to stick with a tree map or a table for the rest of them. But if you like an organized list, if that feels good to you, go ahead and do it. Let's try it. So let's try a U-trap problem. It says, Kenny the Jet and Andrew are both rolling a die. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers they roll is 10? So you can make your probability model. You could do your organized list. You could do your table. Or you could do your tree diagram. All right. And you're going to write down your sample space and you're going to look at them and find the sum of those numbers. And you're looking for what is the probability of the sum being a 10. Go ahead and pause it, show your work. When you're ready to check your mastery, push play and we can go over it together. So hopefully you just paused it and you tried it out and now you're checking your work. So I know that there are going to be two dice being rolled and I want to know what is the probability that the sum of the numbers they roll is 10. So I have a compound event here and this is the two dice are independent of each other, so we would call this an independent compound event. And we're gonna go ahead and roll it. So the first thing is, there are six different possible outcomes when you roll a dice, okay? So I'm gonna make my tree map nice and wide this time. And if when I do that, there we go, when I roll the dice, I could either, the first dice, Kenny's dice, it could either be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then if you roll the dice again, you're either gonna get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And I went ahead and just made the tree map because my handwriting was so bad I had to type those numbers. So here is my first event, I rolled the dice. And then after that event, no matter what I landed on, I rolled another dice, right? So it says, what is the probability that the sum of the numbers they roll is 10? So for this one, if I had one and then rolled another one, right? My sample space would be one, two, or sorry, one, one. Then I would have one, two. Then I would have one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six, okay? Well, none of those give me a sum of 10, but I do wanna make sure that I write down all my possibilities. So here I have two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six. I had three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five, three, six, Oop, not a fraction, I'm just writing down the order, four, one. 
So now I can see all my outcomes, okay? And when I look at this, I'm looking for the sum, okay? So I wanna add them up. So I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, none of those equal 10. Here I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, none of those equal 10. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, none of those equal 10. Four, sorry, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So here is one outcome that had a sum of 10. And you get the point. Here's another outcome that had a sum of 10. And we had one more outcome that had a sum of 10. So we had three outcomes. There are three different ways. So here we want to find the probability of a sum of 10. Okay. And the probability of the sum of 10 equal, there are three different ways to do that, out of 36 different possibilities. So our probability of finding the sum of 10, if you roll two dice, would be 3 out of 36. If you rolled the dice 36 times, we can expect mathematically that you would get a sum of 10 three of those times. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. Um, I know it got a little messy with the tree maps, but if you have more paper, you can really spread out. It's a great way to help you find the probability of those compound events. Thank you so much for spending some time with Instructabeats. Check out our probability song and all our other lessons. We appreciate you. Please subscribe and let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructabeats, out.